the Barbell Benders Podcast. We're here weekly every Monday with Seth Todd and Altman Biggs. This week uh, we got an interesting topic. Um, it's about are you making progress in the gym and how to measure that versus in training and then also in, uh, when you do meets, if you compete. Um, but uh, Altman, we're, uh, we're back at school now. Um, how's your training been going? I know you've been doing some strongman stuff. Yeah. It's been going really well. I think I've gained a little bit of size, but I'm making progress. <laughs> yeah, and gaining size, you mean getting fat? Shh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> There's only one size. <laughs> hey, the, the bigger belly you have, the easier you can load that uh, that atlas stone. Yeah, and, and the bigger something, you can deadlift. Something you put that log on. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. It's something you put that log on. But yeah, everything's been going pretty well. Um, everything's been going up, going up pretty smoothly. So nothing to complain about. What are you? Are you? Are you? Seth, are you making progress? I mean, I think I am. It, it's hard to tell. Like, I compete equipped, and I've been doing raw training since November. But, um, yeah, I try to I try to add, like, 10 pounds every week. Um, you know, my form has been certainly getting better, um, you know. So, I, I think I am. But, yeah, your, uh, squat looks re- your squats look really good tonight. Yeah. Like, they look a lot better than that, that I've seen in the past. And, honestly, tonight they were they were kind of trash. It was uh, it was the first day with wraps back on. I mm-hmm. like get bottoms next week, so um, and I was tired for whatever reason. I mean, I slept plenty last night, but I don't know. It was a different gym, you know. Getting back to school, Dude, I do find it is, it is different coming to school, training at school versus training at home. Yeah, that's just. It's, I think it's just a di- different atmosphere. Yeah, like like you switch environments. Yeah, it's kind of like it's its own stressor. Yeah, yeah, like like weight is weight, but you know, environment is. That's like it can have a huge impact on how you train. Yeah, like like at my gym back home, you know, there's it's a lot smaller than the one here. Mm-hmm. And there's not many people in there. Yeah. Um, you know, usually I'm the only one in the the squat area, so I don't have to worry <laughs> about anybody around me. But um, the gym here is packed. Yeah, it was it was quite packed today, especially at New Year resolution, especially for those young kids. <laughs> Man, everybody's making New Year resolution. They're gonna fall off by, by February. <laughs> wow. Not giving him much hope, are you, Seth? I don't give anybody much hope. <laughs> well, you heard it from Seth. Don't <laughs> don't try to impress him because he won't be impressed. If you can make it to like, I'd be I'd be impressed if you made it till the summer with the resolution. Okay. And like stuck with it. Okay. I mean, that's what the statistics say is like most people drop off by February. Yeah. The ones that aren't committed enough. Yeah. Because it, it gets hard. Yeah. Yeah. It gets hard to keep something up. Yeah. Keep doing it. Wait, do you think that lifting has ever been hard for you though? Um, not really. Yeah. I mean, you know, starting in middle school and football, you know, it's been like the most consistent thing throughout yeah. throughout school. So like, it just comes naturally. Yep. I'm not I'm not like a natural Jesus Alvarez lifter, <laughs> but like go into the gym. I don't have to make yeah. myself go. Yeah, I, I find it really hard when people tell me like they haven't been training, or I've talked to some of the people over the break, and they're like, "Yeah, I just haven't been training." I'm thinking, why? Yeah. Why would you not train? It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Yeah. Because then like, yeah, I've kind of lost motivation because I'm not. Uh, my weights aren't getting heavier. I'm like, well, because you're not training. That's why you're not getting any better. <laughs> you Come have on, to dude. train consistently. Yeah, exactly. So that, that kind of leads into what we're talking about today. Um, are you making progress in the gym? And and my first thought behind that is there's two different ways you can quant- quantify that. You mm-hmm. know, um, your training numbers and as well as technique during training. And then also if you compete, you know, are your is your total, your squat bench and deadlift going up, mm-hmm. you know, in meets. So what are, I know you've been kind of, sw- you switched to strongman training uh, mm-hmm. for a meet in, a, in about a month. How, what are ways that, that you measure progress in that? Um, a lot of strongman, it can be time. Because the, the weights kind of stay the same with the events. Yeah. And let's say I'm, like I'm doing a sandbag medley or a stone medley. So I try to increase my time or just get more efficient at, picking up the stone, run, running to the stone, picking it up, and then kind of uh, tossing over the barrier. So getting more efficient that way, that's a way of making progress. Um, and then, of course, adding more weight to the bar, um, getting more efficient at the deadlift, the squat. Because, um, like I said in the last episode, I'm, I'm pretty young at this. So if when my, stro- when my squat gets stronger, my um, ability to pull a car is going to get better. And then my, my ability to pick up a stone is going to get better because I'm just getting stronger. Um, yeah, so one thing you mentioned there, efficiency. Mm-hmm. And I think that's not only applicable to, to strongman like you're doing, but um, also just to squat bench and deadlift. Yeah. As far as, like, finding the little things. Because that's all, that's all powerlifting is. You know, exactly, if, if you yeah. want to have a decent career in it, that's all it is, is picking out the little things. You know, your inefficiencies, mm-hmm. fixing those, 
and you'll be able to lift a weight better and stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, like one thing, um, I know Bryce Crawshek, he, uh, he does a, a, a form check every Friday, I think, and people, like, send in videos to him, and he'll correct them. Mm-hmm. And, like, if you've, if you've hit a plateau and you think that, you know, there's, there's nothing you can fix, go check out some of his videos because I guarantee some of the things that he's correcting on people probably apply to you. Um, yeah. Because there's not, because like, like you say all the time, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So it's it's hard on your own to to fix stuff in your squat bench and deadlift mm-hmm. when you don't know what to look for. Yeah, you gotta have. It's good to have that second opinion. Yeah. And you can you can kind of be um, not as hard on yourself sometimes. You'd be like, maybe it's just because I'm not genetically gifted. I've been in that. I've been in that. Like yeah. Kind of, um, especially this past summer. I, um, thanks to me, I was thinking like, wow, um, I'm not. I'm just not genetically gifted for this. I, I'm not good at this point. I'm like, now I'm just like, well, if that, I'm I'm gonna do it either way. Yeah. So, so I'm just going to have fun with it. And, that, and my progress is shot through the roof because I think it's just mentality change there. Right. And then, like, um, I know a lot of people probably think that. I thought that myself. You know, mm-hmm. maybe I'm not for this. Um, but that's that kind of goes back to that thing, you know, we want progress now. Yeah. We, we want bigger numbers now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it takes, you know, for my goals, it's going to take a decade or more. You know, yeah. if, if you want to put 100 pounds on your squat, you know, that's not going to happen in a month or two. Yeah. It's going to take a year or two yeah dude um speaking of that like not everything's instant it's been really interesting so when i was doing that bodybuilding training i think that has had a huge carryover to what i've been doing now Mm -hmm. massive carryover one my work capacity is better two i'm making progress like i've never made before it's been quite i'm gonna say it's been quite awesome um and i think it's just i wasn't as focused on powerlifting then but i just realized that if i didn't do that i wouldn't be where i am now so let me ask you this: how How long were you doing that bodybuilding style training? Um, probably like I started it kind of in the middle of my meat prep, honestly, or mm-hmm. the, like the last month of my, my meat prep. I yeah. was doing the main list, but I was also including actually, actually, it started in the summer. I was doing the power building AI for Juggernaut, and so I did a little bit there, and it's just kind of kind of built up over time. And then I did I did bodybuilding training hard for about six to eight weeks of just straight bodybuilding training, and I've and I did. And I was cutting weight then, so I didn't see like massive muscle improvements or anything. But now, I think it's built so much of a great base for me to work off of. Excuse me, it's built such a great base, and now I can actually perform. I have more muscle to get stronger. And you know, like the reason I asked that is that it it kind of makes sense because you know most most powerlifting programs they'll have that hypertrophy phase in the beginning, yeah. um, and it it kind of seems like you just did an elongated hypertrophy phase mm-hmm. without like intending it to be a hypertrophy phase yeah, exactly like you were doing like bodybuilding type movements like uh like low weight high reps mm-hmm. and you kind of just elongated that and i think that's probably why it's carried over so well i think so too and it just gives your body it's some a different kind of stimulus yeah something you take a kind of take a break from the heavier weights and kind of give your joints a little bit of break because let's be honest going heavy all the time you can kind of wear on your joints after a while so it's good to take that little bit of back to yeah, go forward for sure so yeah like um and like you said, um, your bench is, is shot up, hasn't oh, it? Oh, dude, it's gotten gone through the roof. Um, I think that's just uh, one of the programs I did was from Jailhouse Strong. It is his back program, and it was doing 100-plus pull-ups six days a week. So it was just, I mean, not six days, three days a week. <laughs> so it, my back has just gotten improved. I think deadlifts has helped that a lot. Um, yeah. We've talked about it tonight after when I was deadlifting, um, kind of trying to, trying to figure out how to kind of pack my lats in. I think that's helped that a lot, and I've – of course, I have a close, very close grip mm-hmm. compared to everybody else. Um, but yeah, it's it's going good. I think a lot of that I contribute a lot of that to that bodybuilding phase. Yeah. So maybe maybe if you find yourself in a plateau um, and you've been doing something for a while and find out it's not working, you know, like mm-hmm. you said on here a lot, get rid of it, change yeah, it, yeah, change something, get um, change the stimulus that you're giving to your body. Mm-hmm. Maybe not going so much from a powerlifting to a bodybuilding mm-hmm. style workout. But change the exercises in there. You yeah, know? we'll just go to a different rep range or something like yeah. that. Like we're so used to going, like as powerlifters, uh, sets of three, five, maybe going to a set of 20 sometimes. <laughs> like, I mean, that sounds like a lot, but um, you have to uh, think think about it. Like um, as a bodybuilder, when you're trying to grow muscle, you need about 40 seconds of time under tension to build adequate muscle. And when you do a set of 40 seconds, that lasts about 40 seconds, which is probably going to be about 20 reps or 20 reps might even last a minute sometimes. Um, 
you're going to re- release a lot of growth hormone, so you're going to be primed for growth. So yeah. It's, it's, it's a good thing to dabble into, especially to change up your training. Yeah, so, so like, you know, um, progress. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about measuring it as efficiency, um, and you can also measure it as, you know, actual weight on the bar, which is probably the most obvious to most people. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you, you don't have to increase the weight a lot every week. Yeah, you know? if at all. Yeah, like if at quality. all. quality. That's one thing um, I've been doing the juggernaut. I got him back on the juggernaut. Hey, I've been <laughs> doing the powerlifting version, and it's uh, sometimes it doesn't put bump you up in weight. I'm like, oh, but I want to go up. I'm thinking like, well, let me focus on getting the quality of the movement. And I've have noticed that it has helped me a, little, a lot. Yeah, and exactly. Just, and not really going to failure as much as focusing on kind of maybe two to three reps in reserve and just focusing on quality form. And I think that's helped me improve a lot as well. Yeah, so like like when you're keeping the same weight, you're focused on picking out those little things and improving those week to week. Um, and you know, after it's it's gonna take a couple of weeks to to fix a form issue or technique issue oh, to, yeah, to sure. get it ingrained, um, and probably even longer than that to make it a habit. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But um, like I've been doing um, mostly sevens since my deload the last few weeks, mm-hmm. and every week. Every week I've kind of undershot a little bit, um, just because I don't like overshooting. Mm. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll undershoot just a tiny bit, you know, like a six and a half, seven. And then the next week, I'll try to add ten pounds. And you know, because I undershoot most of the time, I can't add ten pounds. Yeah, that's probably actually a good thing that you probably undershoot a little bit. Yeah, because it leaves you a little bit in the tank, so you know that you can do more next week. Yeah, and like, um, there's I've been raw training right now. There's no reason to push it too hard. Yeah, you know, keep 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 stuff relatively light so I can work on form and technique, and then you know, because my body will it'll thank me for that when I get into equipment mm-hmm. and really start beating it down, and that's the you know now's the, kind of the time we're getting yeah. into that. And you do see how people like their their form or, or their their weights go up dramatically. I think that comes all that can come from technique, like what you're doing. Absolutely. So it's good. It's cool to see that sometimes too. Like yeah, that that's part of that making yourself more efficient. Yeah, you know the the more efficient you can lift, the more weight you're going to be able to lift. Exactly. But you gotta you gotta find that that balance between the the good technique going up in weight, but not going up too high mm-hmm. to where your technique starts to to flaw and things yes. start to go south. Yes. So you gotta kind of save it for that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, obviously, when you get up to like ninety to one hundred percent of your one rep max or higher, there's gonna be a little bit of technique breakdown. There's just there's always gonna be exactly. It's it's a one rep max. And so that kind of segues into to measuring progress in a meet setting, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, when you go into a meet, obviously you're going to be lifting those higher percentage weights. Mm-hmm. Some things are going to break down. What are, after a meet, what are you looking at? I'm looking at videos of just how I did, honestly. Um, last meet wasn't too great. I was uh, 20 pounds under what I usually compete at. But I, I still hit some PR. I hit, still hit two PRs across the board, so I was pretty happy about that. But definitely videos are where sticking points are. I think that's been a big thing for me so far and just dialing in that technique like you're doing um it's definitely helped out a lot yeah and so so after the meet you know we we say on here a lot you know take videos in your training mm-hmm. if you don't do that at least at the very least take videos of a meet because like oh, yeah. you know you're probably going to pr if you've been training right mm-hmm. um you're going to want those videos of pr but also you want to see what breaks down when mm-hmm. you get to that higher percentage um and that's a perfect place to find out where where something technique wise is breaking down, yeah. so you can go back in um, for your next training cycle and fix it. Yeah, and it's good to have somebody there to tell you, to tell you like this looks like off. Like like tonight when I was deadlifting, you took a video of me and I was like, all right, I think I think I, I think I look pretty good. But then you were like, now nah, this looks a little loose. I was like, okay, I'll try to fix that. So just be open to have someone else kind of critique you. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of things that like you're not gonna feel. Un- yeah, exactly. unless yeah, yeah. unless someone is watching you to be able yeah. to tell you that or you video and you're like oh wow i didn't know i was doing that yeah like uh like like my top set of squats tonight i realized how how rushed they were mm-hmm. and you know it was it might have been just because i had wraps on for the first time uh hadn't had wraps on in a while i was not not used to that you know mm-hmm. feeling rushed but you know live and learn gotta look at the look at the bright side and take what i can from this trans session and apply it to next week and next week we'll have bottoms and you know they things might be a little worse than usual but um i got to deload after that so recoup and start training heavy again that's so cool i love this stuff dude <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool to see like how different people train especially you with your equipment how you 
uh, I, I like to see how you had the gear over time, and then you say like, okay, so you, you it, they seem rushed because you're you, it's a new stimulus with the wrap, so you have to kind of learn it again. Yeah, but you probably can learn faster than you did the, the time before. Right. But it's, it's just it's just cool to see. You. And see, it's like um like I knew I felt rushed tonight, and and I knew that because um, at the meet in November on my third squat, they they messed up the order. And, like, I was about mm-hmm. to go. Like, I walked out onto the platform, and they were, everybody was shouting no because they switched the order for me and another guy. And it's like, I already had my reps on, third squat. Obviously, they're 11 out of 10 tightness. I've already hit my ammonia. And so I go back, and Dylan almost took them off. And I was like, no, I've been training with these for, you know, six weeks. I'm used to them. We're to leave them on. So I left them on for his squat and when they loaded my weight. <laughs> and, you know, but I, I couldn't do that now, you know. Yeah. I get under, I wrap them, squat three reps, and I'm ready to get them things off. Yeah. You just weren't not used to them. Yeah. Or exactly. you might have been, that adrenaline might have been, just been rushing. You might have been like, I don't feel anything. I'm just a, too much of a man. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep the ego in check. <laughs> yeah. So but, what are what are other ways that, you know, aside from strongman and powerlifting, that you can measure progress out, out, outside of the gym? So we're not talking about gym at all? No. So we're talking about like school and everything like that. Well, not school, but like um, maybe like uh, recovery tactics. Oh, okay. Um, sleep. Is, um, sleep. Um, you can measure how well you sleep. If you're constantly waking up in the middle of the night and everything like that, then you're probably something's probably going on. You might be overtrained. You might be um, something else might be going. It might be really stressed in your life, or you just. Uh, one thing for me is I, I need to get some blackout curtains from my room because there's a light that shines at, at night. And I think that kind of keeps me up sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, I turn off all the blue lights and that I have in here, like the microwave and stuff like that. Um, I think that helps out a lot. Uh, eating too. Um, if you're not as hungry, that that could be a sign of your overtrain, which a lot of people nowadays aren't. Let's be honest, like super hungry all the time, but yeah. it it still can be a sign if you're somebody that is usually hungry, but you just don't feel like eating or uh, another thing that you can look at is your social life and everything. Is that suffering because you're um, kind of overtrained or not? Like tonight, I went to the gym. I was talking to everybody. I was like, I was ready to lift and everything. I was like, well, I feel really good tonight. Might have been I haven't seen anybody yeah. in a while. But I was usually when usually I use the same thing with clients too. Like when I know that they're talking, if they're talking a bunch, or if I'm talking a bunch, I'm just like, okay, I'm I'm ready to do something. Yeah, something's ready to go down. Yeah, so like you mentioned sleep, um, and we we've had an episode on that, um, how to improve performance. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, progress in your sleep cycle, um, yep. like getting, getting with your circadian rhythm, going to bed, going, mm-hmm. uh, waking up at the same time every day. Yep. Um, like you're over a few nights, your body will learn that Absolutely. and and you'll be getting better sleep mm-hmm. and not just, not just getting eight hours of sleep, eight hours of quality sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're, like you said, if you're waking up in the middle of the night, find things to change. Yes. Um, because, it can make it better. you know. Your body is literally rebuilding, recovering, mm-hmm. and building more muscle while you're sleeping. Yeah, that's the most important time for you. I think another thing, too, is like, I mean, you just, at, at home, I sleep on my couch because it's the most comfortable to me. I, it's weird. I don't know. You don't sleep in your bed? No, I, I, I think the couch is more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, I think one the past couple of nights, my, this bed hasn't been as comfortable. But yeah. I mean, it, you know, you're changing where you sleep. Yeah, you that, just stimulus, it's a stressor. That, that's going to affect it. <laughs> so it's going to take a little while, a couple of days, to get back yeah. in that rhythm of sleeping here. But yeah, the couch is more comfortable. <laughs> I, I can understand that. Like, it's crazy at home. Um, like, we'll be watching TV, and I'll be laying on the couch with my dog. And, you know, if it, it's, it can be like 8.30, and I'll fall asleep yeah. on the couch. And I go to bed. And I can't go to sleep for nothing. Like it's just something about that couch, <laughs> dude. It's it's the magic of the couch, man. Yeah, and like you know, some some nights, uh, a couple, a while ago, I was like, my mom wake me up, go to bed, and I was like, just leave me here. Just, yeah. <laughs> and then I wake up hot in the middle of the night, and I go to my bed anyway. Yeah. But yeah, and then like you said, eating. Mm-hmm. Um, are you are you getting the same amount of calories every day? Mm-hmm. Um, do you do you feel full and satiated? Um, do you not feel like, like drowsy or Mm -hmm. dizzy from training because you haven't had enough? Mm -hmm. Um, and just, just being consistent with like your sleep and your eating that that's another way that you can see that you're making progress. Um, using a scale. Yeah. Um, I woke up, I usually wake up around two or three. I woke up at two or one this morning. So I know I didn't eat as much as I probably should have or drink as much for those two. Yeah. And I kind of felt it today. Yeah. And like, um, I heard someone say one time, 
um, you know, weight weight can fluctuate so much on a daily mm-hmm. basis, and maybe that can be like if you're really worried about your weight, um, maybe not weigh every day, mm-hmm. maybe weigh like two or three times a week, um, and kind of get an average because yeah. you know um, how much you drink, how much you eat, how much you use the bathroom, you know, yeah. all those little things, you know, how much you how well your body digests stuff at night, yeah. like you know that can have an effect up and down on weight. True. Um, so maybe every couple of days trying yeah. to weigh. That's, yeah, don't be a psych- psycho like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when you were prepping for that bodybuilding show, you kind of had to. Yeah, I was so concerned about it. And it's kind of just kind of stayed there. I'm yeah. curious to see what it is. I usually weigh it like a couple times a day, too. Just as, A couple I, times a day? Well, like, I have times of the day like, okay, I know I need to, I need to weigh this right now because I, I, I'm a hard, it, it's hard for me to gain weight. I, I, dude, I, I've eaten like those boxes of pasta and beef just to maintain my weight. If I don't do that, then I'm. I don't gain weight. You need more PB and J's. Yeah, that's that can get hard to get down. <laughs> <laughs> hard to get a PB and J down. Well, the bread kind of like makes it to where it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, like rice stuff with rice base. Yeah. Um, potatoes are a little bit more satiating. Grits, so stuff that's easy to digest. Gosh, I, lo- I love some cut up fried potatoes. <laughs> not not like French fries, but like cut up in cubes. I can tell. And like fried. Ah, that's where we're going. <laughs> Hey, I'm still within my weight class. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Wait, so wait, what's the top of your weight class? 231. And you're 230? 30? Yeah. Oh, you're right there. I mean, but that's what I've been all the whole break. Oh, yeah. Is I've really, like, maintained between, like, 229 and 232. Gotcha. Because I prefer to, to train where I compete at. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, don't wanna, I don't want to mess with cutting or anything. And it's, like, it's a different aspect because I'm in gear. Mm-hmm. And so even, like... A five seven pound difference can change the way my gear fits. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll change the way my belt fits. Everything. So I just prefer to compete where I, or live and train where I compete at weight wise. Yeah, that's good. Um, you you were giving me shit tonight for my belt prong and like yeah, I fluctuate in weight a pretty good bit. Honestly, yeah. it's just how my body is and my body just means I need to be more consistent with food. But it I just find it it's hard for me. Like I got to up to two hundred five and I was just like I couldn't eat it. I would, was force feeding myself and it's just like i can't eat anymore so it's just yeah it's just a completely different person yeah so um like like what is i don't i don't want to um, get in too much about like progress for a beginner because mm-hmm. obviously beginners are going to make you know big beginner yeah. gains um for an intermediate athlete though someone who's been training a year or two maybe three what is a reasonable amount of progress to expect in the gym? You think like like weight wise? This is an interesting question because um, again, it's going to be different for like you're going to have better results than I have maybe sometimes. Um, so let's go back to like when we first started. When I first came to Falcon Team, I gained fifty pounds on my squat in like a couple months, in like two or three months, which mm-hmm. is that's pretty fast. That's a pretty good bit. And it's definitely slowed down since then. Um, but as you get more intermediate, you get more experience. So your techniques want to get better. Mm. And so you're going to, you might have a jump in, in how, in your progress because your technique and everything gets better. So that might be a benefit. So you might see another 50 to a hundred pounds yeah, because your technique is better and that's how important technique is. But then I think it's when you get to the more, the kind of end of your intermediate stage just kind of slows down like a lot a pretty good bit like yeah. you don't see too many elite guys adding like 100 pounds to a total at a meet yeah like you happen. can still see your intermediate guy do that because yeah. we're still we're still learning i'm sure you've had the same thing like sometimes you go through times of you growing like during december is when i f- i fucking grow dude yeah it's just it, it's crazy um everything goes up maybe because i'm not in school stress isn't as high but just something about december even my parents are like yeah you you've always had a growth spurt in december i was like mm. maybe that's part of me that's just my time my prime time to grow right and so you got to take that into consideration. Find times. I think there is a time of the year where everybody kind of gets better. Yeah. But what are you? And then, well, yeah. Um, I think that's that fifty to hundred pounds is reasonable. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about on each lift or in total? In total. Oh yeah, I think that's that's very reasonable. Mm-hmm. Um, like I went, I don't know how much I added um, from my first to my second meet. It was a decent bit, but the equipment had something to do with it because mm-hmm. I got a new squat suit. Um, I really honed in my bench shirt. But um, yeah, I think. 50 to 100 pounds is completely reasonable. Um, one, because in a year, you're going to build a decent amount of muscle mm-hmm. if you're doing things right way and recovering the right way. 
Um, but also, I had someone there and a team of guys to help me correct my form. Mm-hmm. So my form got exponentially better in that year. Um, but as as we've kind of gone on, and I think, you know, as as a power lifter in their career as a whole, the more years you get into it, the slower you're going to progress. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, you know, strength comes on slower. Like, you hear guys talking about working a whole year to put 10 pounds on their bench, mm-hmm. you know, and that's just because – you know, after seven, eight years, you've you've really dialed in on your technique. So there's there's always something to improve, but you know there's not something huge that's going to yeah. add twenty pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, the higher weight you get, that um, the high, and the higher weight you get, the like ten pounds. It's it's a smaller percentage of like four hundred pound bench versus like a two hundred pound bench. Mm-hmm. Like so, the percentage wise that you're adding is is going to be a lot smaller. Yeah, for sure. And it's going to be harder to add that. And, like, you know, we're, we're comparing uh, progress in the gym versus progress in a meet. Now, let's say that you've been making a lot of progress in the gym. You know, you're adding 5, 10 pounds a week. Um, you've kind of worked up to your 85, 90% in the gym, and you go to compete. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just have a really shitty meet. Like, things go sideways. Um, you know, you, you go 4 for 9, 5 for 9, don't get the total you want. Mm-hmm. And your total is actually less than the time you competed before. Now, that doesn't mean you didn't make progress. Yeah. You know, you can't... It's just you, a bad day. Yeah, you got to take those those other factors um, outside of just the weight you lifted mm-hmm. with a grain of salt um, and know that, you know, you might, you, may, you made progress in training, but, you know, it just it just didn't come together that day for the meet for yeah. whatever reason. And that's, that's going to that's happen. If you talk to every single powerlifter that's been powerlifting significantly for a while now, they're going to say the same thing. Yeah. They've had bad meets. They've had great meets. When their training probably didn't go as well, so yeah, and that like that happens, you know, you're going for your your third lifts. Ideally, that's going to be, you know, a hundred percent or more of mm-hmm. your one rep max. So that's what you've never tried. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like like I believe you should only PR in a in a meet. Mm-hmm. You know, leave the training for the training. Um, and you know, sometimes sometimes you're going to miss PRs. You know, it just yeah, happens. Yeah, um, but you got to come back. It's a uh, James Strickland, who's going, he's trying to be the first man to bench. Uh, I think it's seven hundred under three hundred pounds. He took him twelve tries to get six hundred pounds, a six hundred pound bench. Wow, twelve tries. So he just stayed so, persistent. So he failed a lot. Yeah, but, but but that doesn't mean he wasn't making progress in the gym. No, not at all. Because he, he's now one of the best bench pressers in the world. Yeah, and I'm sure it took him it took him putting all the little things together mm-hmm. um, and continuing to build on that. You know, and everything. He, Everything goes right on that day to get that lift, mm-hmm. you know, and that's that's kind of what you need for a really good meet. Yeah, but there's there's a range of things that can go wrong. Yeah, you're, you're traveling somewhere, sit in the car for a while. You're uh, like we, we, when we go, we're in a completely different bed, we're in a completely different situation. Mm-hmm. We might go to bed a little bit later because we're trying to get everybody settled. Yeah, so it's, a lot of things can can go wrong, and you're in a new atmosphere. You might be a little nervous, but you got to kind of learn how to use all that to your advantage. Yeah, and hopefully the the more you compete, the better you'll get at it mm-hmm. in a, in a meet setting. Um, you know, you learn something every time. I'm still learning something every time. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you can take the little things that you learn, um, try to apply them to that next meet, and hopefully, you know, get get more attempts for yeah. for total wise. Um, exactly. I think it's cool. Like one one progress uh, way. It's it's thing that's um, like when we were younger, we probably didn't get really that much mm. recognition for our strength because we honestly we weren't we weren't really that strong. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's pretty cool to see like the progress of you of you going to the gym now and putting up this weight and people are like, oh, that guy knows probably something now. He's, yeah. he's strong now. So that's I think that's a pretty cool way to make progress. <laughs> yeah, and that's like um like the more the more you lift, the more things you'll learn. Absolutely. And like like the longer you lift, so like you can measure your progress another way by just how much information you have, mm-hmm. like some things when you first started lifting that you wouldn't have known not to do, um, or some, some technique issues, you know, a year or two down the road, you, you know, in your head, you know, I shouldn't do that. You know, that doesn't make sense to my training. Um, you know, the, there's these issues that I fixed over the years. So you also, you're, you're progressing knowledge wise as well as total wise. Yeah, for sure. And you, like, it's, it's cool to talk to you, Caleb, Dylan, mm-hmm. just like ask them about their programming and, y'all's programming and stuff just to see like okay what are y'all doing what's what are you what's y'all's new thing y'all figured out yeah it's cool just to bounce ideas off each other oh yeah for sure and just like compare compare each other's training 
Yeah. Because, like, we all know different information. Yeah. And, um, you know, if I recommend if, if you're not already writing down your program or have it written down somewhere, like the weights you hit, mm-hmm. you know, do that. Yeah, it's definitely a game changer. That, that's a great way because, like, you might say you're going to be able to remember what you did last week, next week, but you're not. If you only have, like, one workout a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not but enough. It is cool to see, though, like, um, I'm going I'm to use tonight again because, like, tonight wasn't the best squat session, but I had a really good um, defs deadlift session. Yeah. Like, I, you, I haven't gone past 385 for defs deadlifts, and tonight I was doing 405. I was like, okay, that's a lot better than it usually is. So yeah. It's just taking the wins where you can and – Again, writing it down because mm-hmm. I had it written in my phone. I was like, okay, I did 385, so I got, I want to get, I want to do more than I did last right. week. Right. So next week, you know, um, I don't know how much of a struggle that 405 was, mm-hmm. but, you know, next week, if you don't add weight, you're going to try to work on those things that yeah. that we saw tonight. Exactly. And if I might just do more sets with the 405. Yeah. Like I might, instead of doing two sets, I might do three sets with it. Right. So that's a way to overload. And you, and you might be stuck at a certain weight for a month. Yeah. It's just, figuring it out and just figuring out what's best i'd rather mm-hmm. get better quality so i don't hurt myself and then be out for longer yeah it's it's uh over the over the break uh, i was working with the football team mm-hmm. and uh there were some kids there they were just like dude my my legs hurting really really bad i was like i was like all right stop you're done he's like what i was like yeah we want to get you to come in later we we <laughs> I, I like you did your you did some work today which is fine but we I don't want to kill you today. If we kill, if we kill you today, you won't be able to come in tomorrow and do something. Yeah. So we got to take the wins where we can. You got to get to learn to back off and just kind of, um, just yeah, just learn to back off. Yeah. So what are what are some things you learned while working with them over the break? Um, they have a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it was really good though. Those coaches were very receptive. Um, they they they're my old. I, I'm not gonna say old my old football because I didn't play football, but they're yeah. all the coaches that, that I know. I went in and helped them with their programming and stuff. Taught some of the kids how to do things. Took some of the kids through workouts, and I was training a D1 athlete at the time too. He worked, he plays at JSU. Mm-hmm. Kind of working with him. He had, I think he overtrained a little bit honestly because yeah. he he had never taken a break. He's got one of those uh, families that are like you better work or work or work, work, which is uh, that's good. Don't get me wrong. I'd rather somebody do that. I'd rather have to pull somebody back than having to push them, push them. Right. Um, but I had oh, oh, he had a, was starting to have hamstring problems, and he did end up doing something like straining his hamstring a little mm-hmm. bit. I was like, okay, we got to back off a lot. We can't be doing that. Like it was just after the one workout we did, he was um, the next workout was he was having hamstring problems. I was like, all right, we got to back off. We can't have that. You got you've got a season to play in the month, so yeah. we we can't because they're playing their season for the spring, which is interesting. They didn't, they didn't play in the fall, Mm-mm, not at all. Wow. So um, they've got that to worry about, but it's cool. I learned, uh, we, I, again, to take it slow, start light, yeah, for sure, and um, hopefully the coaches learned something too because I was I, I thought that was a really cool experience for me. Yeah, and I'm glad that they were very receptive about it. They were talking to me about what we did at Mississippi State football. What are some things they can implement? I helped them again, like I said, with their programming. Helped them order exercises and what days to lift. What like if you're? I thought this was pretty cool, but. Um, Let's say I asked them what their most attended days were, which is kind of like Monday and Tuesday. I was like, okay, these need to be your main days. Mm-hmm. The other days should just be, I can just be accessory work. Yeah. But these two days need to be like your main list because again, that's when you have the most attendance. And then the other days are just kind of uh, accessory work, just stuff that's not as important as maybe a bench and a squat. Yeah. So did um did they did they change anything about their workouts? Um, you I hope they did. <laughs> um, over the break, they didn't really have like mandatory workouts. The guys just worked mm, out when they could, right. but there were only like two or three guys that worked out. And uh, then I would help, I would help them with that, of course. Well, I, I, they, I didn't help them as much because they didn't have as many workouts, but I did help them with the conditioning because some of the guys would come and train with the D one guy. So I was kind of helping them out too, yeah. teaching them med ball throws and um, start again starting light with them just to started with sprints, teaching them how to actually condition for football, yeah, not just um, going out and just running and doing stuff. Mm-hmm. So that was that was a neat experience. Yeah, and like that, the the high school football days. That's that's a place where you can really mess up or set yourself up. Yeah, for for a good career in lifting. If if you continue to lift after football, I, I told him that too. I'm mm-hmm. like junior high and high school and your soft and your freshman and sophomore year. That is the most important time for any athlete. Yeah, they're, they're, that is their most prime for uh, success. They're. Uh, best time to develop them I, and i was thinking to myself I, I think i'd like to be a high school coach because I, I know that that's a very important 
time for them. And if you if we can make them as good as possible now, just think of what they could do when they go to college. Yeah. Like if you make them as good as as, as a good strength and conditioning coach, if you make them as great as you can, imagine what they could do in in college. Yeah. And In, ingrain those good habits now. Exactly. And it's just, and it, I think it just comes down to ignorance. It's not being, uh, it's not not like um, they're ignorant on purpose. It's just they don't know any better. Yeah. Like like people. People look down on the word ignorant, but yeah. you know I looked it up one time, and it's the definition is literally just a lack of knowledge. Yeah, you know, you exactly just what it is. you just don't know about something. So yeah. calling someone ignorant about something is not you know, it's not a, a check or you know a bad mm-hmm. remark. That's just saying that they just don't know about something. Yeah, and teaching them how to make progress. Yeah, like like I'm ignorant about um, multiply training. And I got no <laughs> idea about it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm ignorant about all the tra- all that kind of training. <laughs> so, but. Um, go back to making progress. So yeah, we just taught them how to make progress. That's all. That's all we basically. Did. Cause that's what, if you want to be a good, successful coach, you have to learn to make progress. Not just adding weight, but movement. And especially with junior high and high and high school guys, the best way for, I think to make progress for them is just technique and everything. Yeah, that's how they're going to get stronger. They, uh, uh, junior high guys, are more likely to get stronger because of better technique, not because of adding muscle. Right. Yeah, that's. And I think that should be the main focus um, in junior high is, is making that technique good because I think the majority of the guys that do play junior high football will go on to play high school football. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they already have that good base of uh, focus on technique first and not weight. You know, they'll be better set up for, for high school and then if they continue lifting for college because yeah. it's, in my opinion, I think it's hard harder to break bad habits than form good ones sometimes. Absolutely. Like and you hit the nail on the head right there. And, you know. Because you got you've already done something so much the wrong way, mm-hmm. it's gonna take it's gonna take a long time to fix it and make it right. Exactly. Because your body's done that one thing so much, mm-hmm. you've got to re reprogram it to do it the right way. Yeah, and that can just take time. Just yeah, a lot of time it just takes patience. Yeah, and persistence. That that's been something I've been thinking about a lot. Is like, like man, like you know, I'm guilty of it too. I, w- I want to get strong now. Yeah, you know, I saw Perk. He uh, he took like. Like four ninety six for belt list, like set a five on deadlift or something. And like you know, I want to do that now. Yeah. You know, I want to squat six hundred. I want to bench four hundred now. Yeah. But it just takes the long game. Yeah, you just got to play the long game. It, haven't you found that like as you've gotten stronger, you're like, wow, I'm at this level now. I'm not. I'm not at that level. No, no, not like that. No, not like Austin Perkins level. But you're stronger. You're like as strong as the guys that like the old guys that were in the gym when you were young. Yeah. You're like I'm at that level now. Yeah, That's, this feels awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> I've kind of I've made it to where they are now. It's now let's be the strongest. Yeah, now let's get to somebody else's level. Yeah, it's it's interesting to look back and and see progress over a couple of years. Yeah, um, definitely is. And like the, you know, I've I've gotten stronger weight wise, but looking back and seeing the meet I did in November of nineteen, you know, there's mm-hmm. there's so much some so much progress I've made technique wise. Yeah, there really has. Like, and, like, I'm almost more proud of that than the weight. Yeah, you should be because that just takes time. It takes staying consistent and dialing your technique. Like, your squats look a lot better than they – like, I remember uh, – was it soft my, – my, I think – yeah, it was last year. It had to be last year because you were a sophomore. Yeah. Now. We were, you were squatting your butt, which is like – I was like, yeah, ow. That's some bad butt wink. Yeah, but now it's just like you're solid. You've learned to brace a lot better. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, helping, it's helped you out a, a, a bunch. Yeah. You ought to, you should be there on Tuesday. See me benching that bench shirt. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I know you usually go to the morning practices. I might have to do both. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Zach's going to be helping me, but I might need your help too. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll probably bench in the morning, and then I'll probably do my accessories in the afternoon. Sounds good. Because, like, the first time I took that thing out, like, the most I had ever handled was I took 335 in training for a single, and I took 336 at the meet. I didn't do it. And Dylan loaded up 345. For a triple, last week, and I was like, "Okay, and you I, don't were know, like... I don't know about this," because <laughs> he, because he, he was the only one there, so he had to give me the handoff. Because in that shirt, no way I can get, I can lift the bar off myself. Yeah. So he had to give me the handoff, run around, and place the board. So I was like, "Oh shit, I better, I better hold this thing." I got something you're gonna like that's gonna come in. I got the uh, bench blocks. You know what they are? Oh, the little ones that stick on the bar. Yeah, I got one of those. Nice. So. I mean, I got my homemade blocks. Yeah. Well, if this one sticks on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Yours do look pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Like, I am I think that's pretty awesome. He made it, but I didn't have to make it. Uh, I just paid for it, and it <laughs> sticks on the bar. <laughs> Gosh. 
Yeah, so uh, we've been over progress in the gym, progress in the meet, um, and then the differences, you know, progress outside of training that you can make. Um, anything else you want to add about progress? Just stay consistent. You'll make the progress. My, oh, yeah, I had a question on my Instagram the other, uh, the other day, and they're like, how do I make progress? I was like, well, how, I don't think I've made progress. Oh, what what do you think I should do? I was like, well, I'm, I bet you have made progress. You just haven't realized it. Yeah. And you might have made progress. Like, he's lost a bunch of weight. You might have made a lot of progress at this lower weight. You mm-hmm. might not be as strong as you were because you're, you were larger, and, again, weight moves weight in the end. Um, but – you've probably gotten stronger at this body weight or you've gotten leaner or something like that. Your technique might've gotten better. So just, you have to find where you've gotten better. It might yeah. not be just right in front of your face. You have to find like, okay, how did I get better? So how long do you think, how long do you think someone should wait to, I don't want to say see progress because you can see progress on a weekly basis, yeah. but you know, how, how patient should someone be to, to see a good amount of progress? That's a tough question to answer. Yeah, um, it's different for everybody. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, but be patient. Some yeah. people are going to see progress more than others. Um, usually, when you start a new training plan, you might probably going to see a pretty good amount of progress. But then after a while, that is going to slow down. Then maybe you start a new training program, then you're going to see a lot, a little bit more progress. So it's just it's going to be it's going to be slow. Um, but it's we're in it for the journey. We're not in it like we're in it for the PRs. We love that. That's <laughs> that's that's our bread and butter. But it's a journey that we really love. Like, if that's why we stay consistent with it this entire time. We yeah. love seeing our bodies change. We love seeing everything change. But you just have to remember that it's not going to happen day after day. But take progress pictures, weight, everything like that. Yeah, yeah, and have those. Like, like you might be at the same weight for something for a month or mm-hmm. two, and then all of a sudden, like, it just shoots up. Yeah. And you just notice, like, hey, you know, this progress is actually showing itself. Yeah. And, you know, a, a one rep max, you know, a double, triple PR, whatever it is. Yep. It's kind of like at, you might have to go through a plateau for a little bit or maybe your weights aren't going up as much, but give it like a couple months and watch what happens. You're just going to shoot through the roof because everything you've done has kind of led you up to that. Yeah. Like uh, like we say, PRs, you know, everybody wants them now, but. I will they, be honest. It's a lot more fun. Yeah. But you have to be like, okay, how, what do I want to do in 10 years? Yeah. So yeah. you have to come from. And that's another thing. If you if you wait to PR at a meet or at you know, if you don't compete, at least till the end of your training block. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll be more surprised by the progress. You really will. Yeah. Because if you keep if you continue to PR like every couple of weeks in training, you know, you like like we said before, you only have a certain amount of one rep maxes in your lifetime. Mm-hmm. And like like PRing in the middle of a training block does nothing for you. Like yeah. that that one rep max is not gonna get you stronger. And it's, it's probably going to make you regress a little bit. Yeah, because you have to recover from it. Yeah. And so, you know, wait till the end of the block. Wait till the meet. Um, you know, like like before this last meet, I ended up uh, squatting a PR, but it wasn't planned. It was only because that was what I had that day for that RPE. Mm-hmm. It just happened more than I've ever done. But it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go in your PR today. Yeah. You know, it's just I did more than I've ever done because it's been – it was a year since my last meet, so – and that's that's reasonable yeah. to to expect after a year not competing, you know, going up ten fifteen pounds or something. Yeah, hopefully you have gone up. If you're not, then you're not really doing anything you get stronger. <laughs> better reevaluate my training. <laughs> yeah, you better look at those videos again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think we've been over everything about progress. You know? Yeah, yeah. Take videos, keep a notebook, stay consistent with it, and just give it some time. Yeah, absolutely. Time is time is going to be your friend and your enemy. Gosh, that's that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back every Monday. We've got some uh, some pretty cool guests lined up. I believe we have Eddie Black from LSU next week. Nice. Um and then also uh, we have a strength coach coming on soon and then hopefully um a pretty big pretty big name master lifter won't give his name out yet yeah. hopefully and a pretty big master lifter too <laughs> <laughs> very very notable man um in our in our region and yep. hopefully you know, probably pretty notable in the whole country in the world yeah he's been on the usapl uh instagram sometimes yeah he's uh he's been lifting for like 40 years yeah he knows his stuff for sure he's... so hopefully hopefully we can get him to to come i think we will i think we will. i think he'll be happy to talk about himself i think i think people can learn a lot about that <laughs> absolutely But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. See you guys next week, and um, uh, happy lifting.